going on everybody and welcome back so welcome to another Corvette video that's all I'm working on right now I got high motivation for it <clears throat> I just want to keep at it while it's still fresh in my brain because as you know we have the whole dash part if you haven't seen that video definitely go check it out um, but yeah we're carrying on with the build here now this thing it does have a hole in the engine bay firewall here let's see I'll show you um, on this other side There's a hole right here. So there is some airflow in the car, but for the most part, it's been sealed up. So uh, when you open the door, you'd expect to get hit with a smell uh, like you have in the past, but it smells pretty good. So now that I got everything out of it, I had to fix this door panel. Got caught in a screw and it was coming off, but when you come in here, it doesn't really smell that bad. I don't think it smells that good. But it doesn't smell that bad. So it was it was pretty bad in here. Um, there was a lot of crap in here. And uh, piss and stuff like that. So I think we got a lot of that stuff out of here. And I think it smells a lot better in here. It's at least livable. So I still want to try to get the ionizer. Um, I think I have access to an ionizer that I can borrow. And bring that home. Run that in the car with it sealed up. Like you're, you know it's recommended. Um, see if that'll neutralize the rest of the odors in the bare car where I can get to all the spaces and everything with the ozone and then I'll probably put the interior back in and then I'll run it with the interior parts in too and hopefully based on that we'll have no smell because I'm about to go clean all the inner stuff now the uh, all the inner dash pieces like the heater box and all that other stuff there we're gonna go clean it I did buy a steamer, so I'm going to try to use that um, in conjunction with some other cleaners to try to neutralize and kill everything. I was using bleach for the whole interior, which was good, but the steamer is good too. Um, it definitely kills all the germs and everything, so it's good for the hard to reach areas. And I can use that for this stuff too. Getting all in here after I vacuum all this stuff out, I can use the steamer for this junk, which there is still like, you know, poop and stuff in here. so. I do want to try to kill all of that nasty bacteria and nastiness that is in the mouse poop. Like all the stuff that's in here too, all built up in here. This is all nasty uh, from mice as well, all running over the engine. And the frame rail down here is really nasty, like I said. So the whole thing's kind of mouse infested. So I'd like to do all kinds of cleaning on the engine bay too with the steamer. So we'll see where we get uh, with that stuff. Obviously the interior is the main focus and uh, we're just trying to focus on that. So, going to keep plugging away here, and I'll let you guys know uh, what happens. So I got my little steamer here. I just got this thing. It's a Wagner, so I didn't spend all that much on it, but I think it should do the job. It's got a nice little wand here, and allows you to lock the trigger if you need to. And different attachments. I think this is probably the one I'm going to use. I'm just going to be adding steam. Uh, I'm probably going to bleach these items first. And I'll just show you guys right in the way here. I got some foam on the back here. So I'm concerned with, I don't know if I want to sterilize this or remove it completely. It's pretty much ripped off. So I may just end up removing it. And I just don't want any potential stinking things in the car. So, this is kind of like a trim panel, but it's kind of not. I don't think it's actually visible. It's underneath some other stuff. But, I'm going to remove the foam. It's like just hot glued on there anyway. And I'm sure it serves a purpose, but uh, I don't want anything to smell. So, anything that could possibly retain a smell, we're going to lose. I don't need any added smells. So like I said, I'm just gonna, this is a dilution of bleach here. I've been using this just to spray on pretty much everything and clean. And this is kind of how I've been cleaning all the interior parts so far. Um, and that way, 
make sure we kill everything, which the steamer should help with that even more, ideally. Because we're using the hot steam to sanitize so the thing. It takes a while to heat up. <coughs> so we'll see when we actually start getting some, uh, some steam out of this thing. Right, so the steamer is starting to warm up. It doesn't say it's ready yet, but we're going to start using it. So it's definitely shooting out a lot of hot water at this point. some pretty good steam. I think it's done a, done a pretty good job at loosening some of that debris. So guys, this steamer is really knocking out of the park. It's a Wagner steamer. I'm going to put a little more water in it and fire it up, do some more pieces. but. Honestly, it's making quick work of all this grime that was inside of the heater box. Um, I'll show you guys an equivalent piece, I guess. But uh, for the most part, you know, this thing gets in there and into all the crevices way inside of the box. And it cleans them out really nicely. Uh, some areas that you probably couldn't get uh, with a brush even. You can get that little tip in there and spray the steam. And you know you're neutralizing everything. So I kind of sprayed all these foam things down with some bleach first and then I came back in and hit them all with the steamer these little HVAC doors because these these do seal and the foam I try to I want to try to keep on there um, so that the doors seal like they should and yeah so I don't want to tear that foam off that's that's crucial that plays a role in the sealing of the HVAC system so I'm gonna leave that foam and just try to sanitize it so all these are actually vacuum operated which is cool I never had anything that was vacuum operated so that's pretty sweet but yeah busted this case open uh, there was this piece was like plastic welded here I don't know if somebody's been in here before I, I doubt it um, I think that's probably a factory plastic weld so I'll put that back and I'll either re plastic melt that or put some epoxy or some glue on it to uh, you know fix that but otherwise yeah necessary to take this box apart and clean all the pieces I did take uh, the, this door off to clean. Uh, I didn't do the other ones, but it's it's much cleaner in there now. I'm gonna let it sit. I'll reassemble the box uh, with all these supporting components. And uh, see the steamer's nice for in there. You see it's still got dirt in there, but I hit everything with the steamer. So I know it's clean. I'll, I'll make sure it doesn't smell. But uh, otherwise, yeah, it's it's been really nice to use the steamer. It's definitely doing a good job on everything, I think, and nothing really Nothing really stands a chance against that steam. It's nice and hot, and uh, I know everything is going to be clean, especially between that and the bleach. We're going to be doing pretty good. So I had this thing soaking. I got my little bleach solution right here. I'm trying to get the knee pads going now to save my save my knees, guys. I'm getting old. All right. So the dog's barking like crazy because my dog's out. But this steamer takes some time to heat up. It's not fully warmed up yet, but we're going to wait till then. I'll try to show you guys what we're working with. So there's all kinds of crap. You can see, this is actual poop that was on top of the heater box. Um, these animals were, were shitting on top of the heater box. <laughs> and they were just living there. So we're going to evict them. And look at this. It just melts the debris. Right off. That's really gross. Clean this thing up, you know. May take a couple of runs, 
couple applications, but should get all that grime out of there. Um, so you can see how much better that looks already. Come back in here and just hit it again just to make sure. Got all the grime out of there. So we got that side down. I just try to work in sections here, you know, loosen it up and pull the grime off. And get the bottom. So I've pretty much been at this all day. Just been, uh, you know, sanitizing, uh, bleaching, sanitizing. I didn't bleach this one. I'm gonna set some things aside right now that need to be shampooed. I think I'm gonna do a little more shampooing. I'm just gonna really focus on cleaning today. Try to get all the cleaning done that I can. Um, the back side of this needs to be shampooed. It's carpet. Um, this side's been uh, sanitized with the steamer and. I gotta hit, touch up a couple areas. You know, you can see how how dirty a lot of this was here, and uh, yeah, it's it's a lot cleaner. Uh, between the bleach and the steamer, did a really nice job. So I may flip this on its face and and get a couple areas that I missed. Um, but yeah, I got the vents as well inside of the vents as I could. Put the steamer down inside and tried to send it both directions. Shot steam everywhere. And then I rinsed it out with the garden hose, along with all the other tubes and stuff like that that goes to like the little defrosters. So I did those, and everything's pretty much been bleached. Anything that was rusty, I hit with a rust converter or primer, and cleaned off all the RTV. And I decided that based on these stains on here and on the heater core and the RTV on the heater core box, I think that the heater core was leaking. And somebody went in there and tried to repair it. And it's funny, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of getting it crack check, like just get another one, they're like 60 bucks on eBay. So yeah, it's an aluminum one, but I'm gonna get it. I already ordered it, and I'll put that in. So I'll have a nice non-leaking heater core, because who wants to do this job again, you know? So I'll just put a new one in there, we should be good. Um, got this all cleaned out too, you know? You can see the mice chewed this a little bit. I may put a little bit of something on there, maybe a little hot glue. Or, uh, I don't know, something. They chewed a little holes in it. But as long as it, most of the air is going to get through, it's not a big deal if we got a couple leaks. Um, so, yeah, just, like I said, going through, sanitizing. The console's much cleaner. I probably will go over everything with, like, an interior detail spray um, once it's all back together, just to finalize it. Um, I just got the preliminary, the disinfecting, and the... And the cleaning of the smells that's kind of what I'm focused on right now um, not how good everything looks but it does look a lot better and a lot cleaner all the stuff I have cleaned up this too was all nasty um, all kinds of garbage and trash on there I just gave a little primer on the edge there where those things were rotted so yeah it's all cleaning up real nice and pretty soon we'll be able to start reassembling just gotta get a couple more materials in here and uh, that way we can get started all right, so I did a lot of cleaning yesterday. I was uh, just kind of, uh, you know, killing, killing some time. I didn't want to start this, but I don't have the materials yet, but I'm going to start this anyway. So what I have here is my hole in the floor, which I mentioned before. So I'd like to try to fix this um, using SMC fiberglass, which is the correct repair. So we got a little bit of separation here from this piece here. I don't, I don't know what of this is, I think this is all SMC, which is uh, sheet metal composite. And uh, all, all this lower section here. Some of this is aluminum. I think this is aluminum. This might be, there might be some aluminum in here, but I, I think it's, no, I think this is the sheet metal composite. So we pretty much have to come up in here and get this floor pan back up level with the rest of it. So this area is all buckled. I showed you guys the underside last time where it's all coming out. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so you can see it's totally bowed down. So first things first, there's like a, a backer shield to this um, underneath. So you can see these little rivets here, here and here, and these guys. So I'm gonna try to get rid of those rivets. I'm gonna try to sand them off. I got a new sander, and I'll pry that shield off of there, and that should help us hopefully reshape it without fighting the metal shield, and we can do our fiberglass repair. I may or may not put the shield back on. Uh, I guess it's probably to help from this scenario, but they definitely smashed it so hard that uh, it blew right through there. So we're gonna sand the rivets off, um, and then we'll see if we can separate that metal piece from the outside as the little shield and then we'll try to fix this fiberglass. So this is my newest tool here, Harbor Freight Jobber. It's a Baxter. It is a 90, or I'm sorry, not a 90 degree, it's any degree. You can change the angle with uh, loosening this Allen on top. But it's a uh, half inch by 18 inch belt sander and it's pneumatic and it has variable speed down here. So it's pretty cool. I'm excited to try this thing out. It's pretty good for exactly this, uh, taking off uh, either spot welds or rivets, like heads of rivets or even heads of bolts and stuff. It's it's pretty cool. I mean, you can get different grits, be more aggressive with it, but it's good for you know detail sanding as well. We get some finer grits on there, but I've never tried it, so this is going to be my first attempt at using this thing. So I'm excited. So I'm going to hook it up, and I'll let you guys know what I think about it and uh, how it does against these rivets. There we go. So I think this is something we can straighten out and reuse when we're done. It was clearly glued on there. But now we've opened up a big hole. And yeah, hopefully you guys can see that over here. And now we can get a better look at uh, what we're working with. And hopefully we can try to close this gap. Look at that, see we're almost getting it up there. So I think we're gonna try to bevel that. And we're gonna smash this out a little bit and see if we can bring the floor up a little bit and then even if we use a jack to hold it in place while we do our fiberglass work I think uh, we'll be doing pretty good. So I kind of just you know went with it and I got all this ground out so we won't be able to hit the back side of this section here because the fuel lines are right under there so I'll go up as far as I can probably a little bit up this wall here but that's pretty much all I can do on that so we'll just wait until we hit I'm waiting until I hit the inside first and I'll probably do a piece on the outside and then I'll debate whether or not I want to do an additional on the inside if I have enough for it. Um, maybe I'll look into getting some resin in addition to the epoxy. So it, it's definitely a pretty large repair that I have to make here. You can see that the crack goes all the way up there. And obviously we blew apart this section. And this is kind of just flopping in the breeze here. He's kind of lined up. I can get it in a way where it lines up, but I'd like to get some tape and tape everything from the back side with like some aluminum tape to hold it all together. And once I have everything all held together, I can go ahead and put the epoxy and the cloth, which I think I'm gonna get on this side. So I may do a little bit more scraping here and there to get everything um, prepped, but this side's pretty much all set um, as far as prep goes. I'd like to do this side first and see how it comes out before I tackle the other side. So I just gotta wait on materials on this. We did all we can do on that. So that's, that's pretty good for now. I'm going to see about uh, cleaning up the rest of the parts I have here. Alright guys, so I got all cleaned up for the night. I had a uh, visitor stop over. We uh, talked Corvettes for a while. It was fun. 
and uh, he has a nice pretty mint C4 and I was able to uh, get some uh, get some mock-ups and check on a couple of things on his that I was wondering about this one some things inconclusive still but uh, we'll figure those out on the forms so I got obviously you can see over there I got this panel all ground up so we'll try to uh, address that once I get my materials and we'll get that straightened out and strong right now I got the ionizer in here that I borrowed so uh, I've been told to run it overnight so we'll see what happens I'm gonna run it overnight and I'll unplug it in the morning and then maybe I'll uh, leave the doors open tomorrow or something like that while I'm at work let this thing air out I'll open the hatch and the doors because uh, they say you're supposed to air it out for a few days so I'll just let it air out all day and uh, should be should be good because it does leave an ozone smell I've heard so we'll run it at least once with the interior all out and then we'll run it again once the interior is back in and hopefully it uh, will get rid of all those nasty smells I mean it's gutted right now it doesn't even smell but I just want to make sure that uh, we get rid of anything that could be odor causing and we'll penetrate deep into the panels while everything is taken apart you know we can get all the way in all the cavities and everything and hopefully uh, if there's anything in the rails or frame rails or anything like that we'll get it um, yeah so I'm gonna let it rip the only thing I didn't do is is clean up my hole down in the bottom there I may try to put a little little tape over that hole but it's okay we're gonna have a little air leak there I put the weather strip back in I taped up all the holes in the firewall right here so should be should be good I'm gonna close the hatch nice and slow and turn on the ionizer and get this thing going alright so it's running in there you can see this thing glowing so it's doing its thing killing everything so hopefully we got no smell I mean even more no smell <laughs> after this and uh, yeah so that's it for now we'll pick back up with the rest of the uh, floor repair pretty soon hopefully so I got my hands on some SMC uh, recommended fiberglass repair adhesive I think it'll be fine as long as it'll bond to SMC I think we'll be good so what I decided to use was since this is an epoxy and we're thinking it's not going to stick um, I was talking with um, a professional about it and we're thinking it wouldn't stick to the mat because it just wouldn't soak in correctly um, for the fiberglass so with these mesh pieces this is like a sheetrock mesh stainless uh, not stainless I'm sorry like just mesh uh, like sheetrock compounding mesh I don't know where stainless came from but uh, yeah it's it's like a composite so we're just going to put down a layer of epoxy put down these little strips in there and then I'm gonna put some epoxy over it and just kind of work it in and hopefully um, hopefully it comes out good it is just the inside so we'll see if it if it goes good we'll do the outside if it really is is terribly bad then I'll, I'll buy some resin and do the outside and uh, I'm sure it'll be plenty strong on the inside all the strength is is gonna be on the outside for the most part we are gonna need to you know fill this area in so I backed it all with uh, some aluminum tape so you can see the inner side is all taped up so we kind of have ourselves um, a little area that's made so I'm just gonna load it up fill this thing with epoxy I can't see how it couldn't work um, this stuff's made to bond to SMC we got a good tooth I use 36 grit um, disc so we should have a good bite to the SMC um, and that's that so I'm gonna go ahead and start just doing an area at a time hopefully it doesn't dry too quick on me it's like got a four minute work time which seems like really fast so hopefully I mean I don't know I'm not gluing stuff together so hopefully I should be okay um, it is really hot out so it's gonna cause it to catalyze quick so I'm just gonna work quick I'm not gonna film it sorry I just don't want the camera in the way I mean maybe I could put the camera in the way back I'll see what I can do get a new battery and try to film it but I'm nervous I don't want to mess it up and I don't want the camera in the way I don't have much um, time with this so hopefully it goes good All right. so this is a two-part you gotta put this tip on here tighten this and it mixes inside of here so we're gonna put it on something that uh, we don't mind getting rid of I'm gonna lay it on this sticker here and uh, essentially we're gonna mix it to do what you guys can see um, it mixes in the tip 
So I'm going to put my mask on now. And we'll get it mixed up. Gotta make sure that it's coming out nicely mixed. That should be good. Alright. <clears throat> so, let's say, let's do a small section first. We try to fill in this this area here. So I'm just gonna. All right, let's go for this area up here. I got ants crawling on me. I think I'm going to do this whole thing in one strip. Let's see how that lays down. This stuff gets kind of hot, guys. It starts to cure and uh, it heats up pretty good. So, let's see. Hopefully, I'm not going too thick on it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to load it up over here. I could use something better to spread. So I don't know how much of it it caught. I think the camera turned off. I don't know if it was because it was too hot or what. It was in the sun. But, uh, oh, I'm tripping. Um, I swear I had the mask on the whole time. Um, I don't now so I can talk, but the patch looks pretty good. I don't know. It's, a, it's obviously lumpy. It's not perfect. You can tell where that uh, mesh is in there, but I feel like the mesh is probably going to add some rigidity. It's almost like rebar, you know, although this doesn't really have that kind of same strength from within you know you're, you're just adding like a fibrous thing that it can bond to so it's not going to like flake off um because it's it's bonded everywhere and that fiber is on there too so hopefully it's good i may do another layer uh, i'll probably just let this totally kick and uh cure and then i'll go ahead and peel the tape off of the underside and see how strong it is you know uh, as long as it's decently strong i'll probably do the same thing on the other side go underside uh, on the underside and prep everything and do the same thing it'll probably be harder upside down but uh definitely won't be able to film that but yeah we'll just do the same thing on the inside and then we should be good to go i've got uh, a few chunks here i kept changing gloves and everything because this stuff is it gets warm when it's uh curing and it was actually hot on my fingers so i was nervous i was going to get burned um so i swapped gloves real quick uh, i was just using my finger to spread it which maybe wasn't the best idea in the future. Maybe I wouldn't do that. But yeah, I think it's pretty strong already. Um, it's already started to cure. I had that little uh, the little thing I started on, and now I already started to, to harden and firm up. So I think this will be a pretty good repair, guys. All right, so now I'm going to do the bottom. 
I'll take you guys underneath and show you what it looks like. I got a brush that I cut, kind of make it like a chip brush. So I'm going to try to use that in conjunction with another new tip for this, which I have. And I'll uh, just quickly get on the ground here and show you guys. This is the lower section, so I have it all ground. And it's pretty strong. You can see it's got some flex to it. This material flexes a little bit. But all we have bonding this right here is the up is the top. Otherwise, it's just like a hole with epoxy here. So if we can hit this other side and get it nice and thick and built up on the bottom, I think it should add some rigidity back into this corner here. And we'll take it as far as we can go with the fuel lines here with this crack and just uh, see what we can do. It's all undercoated down here. I don't really understand why. It's like fiberglass. It doesn't really need undercoating, but I guess whatever. So we're just going to do what we can around the fuel lines. And hopefully this mesh and epoxy holds up for a while. I think it'll be fine. It's already pretty strong. Unless I whack this on something, I can't foresee it breaking. And we're going to about to reinforce it even more. So I think once we drill the holes again and put the shield back on, we'll be good to go. So I got done doing the bottom. Pretty much ran out of my chemical in here. So I know it's dark, but that's pretty much what we're working with on the outside. So I know it looks like a bit of a mess. It's all kinds of nasty mesh in there. I wish I could have gone thicker, but this stuff starts to kick. It doesn't have a long work time, so it gets gets hard fast. But oh, all in all, it's pretty solid. Like, I don't think... There's anything that's going to bust this unless we totally hit something and bottom out the car again. It's really solid. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's still curing too, so it's fine. Um, the inside's plenty strong too. I'm like nervous about somebody putting their foot through it, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's strong. Um, so now all we got to do is line up that shield again. Maybe, maybe grind a couple of spots here and there just to smooth it out. And line that shield up and drill some holes and rivet that shield back on. But that's that's kind of secondary. I'll worry about that later. Um, either at a later date or, you know, some other time. Um, but right now, at least we got it patched. And I did what I had to do on the inside um, for now. So we'll get that plate straightened out and rivet it on at a, at a later date. So probably for now, I'm going to work on uh, something else. So I've determined, I think this seat track is bent, but just the mounting location. So I'm going to try to just either stick something in there, like a pry bar, and bend it, or maybe I'll hit it with a hammer or something, just to bend that tab out, because I think that's what was jamming up into the rail here and causing it to bind up on me. Um, you can see there's a little indentation right above the, uh, the rivet there or whatever. Um, or I think the track was slid onto the bent seat rail and just binding. So I think the problem was uh, that this thing got whacked at one point. And you can see the floor pan is all dented up over here. It's dented up in the middle here, over here. I don't know if whatever they ran over that did that is the same thing that did all the other damage. But it's entirely possible. Um, got a little bear action here. My dad was trying to cue me in. Get a lot of these guys around. He's probably gonna cross the road now. So, I think we are good, guys. This, this thing's pretty solid. There's a little bit of flex going on, but I really don't think it's going anywhere. It's held together. The mesh is strong with the epoxy in there, and it's held from the outside, too. So, unless somebody, like, kicks it, which, why, why would you kick it? I, <laughs> I think it'll be fine. Outside looks good, too. So, anyway, I got our seat tracks fixed. I bent 
So both of these rear sections I think got bent when this back, back section got stoved. Um, it's like the seat stayed in place, but this got jammed up. So, because I think this bracket is so strong, I couldn't bend that, so it bent the seat bracket. Um, and that's probably what kept the floor from totally buckling is the seat bracket, to be honest, and the strength of the seat. So that's why this thing would not recline, because it was jammed. So, you can see this bracket does not really sit flush. This thing wants to rock and roll. So the front is, is decent, decently flat. We got a section over here that's all buckled. So I'm just going to leave these on here for reference and I'm going to pound at the floor a little bit with these blocks. I got a big dead blow and we're just going to see if we can uh, blow the floor out right here. do about this section here. This whole area. Oopsie. I don't know if I'll be able to hit this hard enough without hitting my hand on this truck. Ouch. That didn't feel so good. We'll stick to an isolated area. I think that was working better for us. Okay. Get this out of the way. Better? I don't think my finger's broken. Guys. Don't worry. This section is really messed up. I think I'm helping though. I'm making faces, don't lie. Let's see. I think that's better. Everybody, I think this is going to cap it off for this Corvette video. I'll show you guys it, it rained pretty heavily last night and wanted to see how much water got in here. Looks like we got a little bit of wetness over here. I think we may have some some leakage past these door felts here in the door. You can see it dripped a little bit down here. So that's obviously weather stripping related. So it's a little wet in that corner. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. I don't see any wetness from the windshield, which is good. Um, over there, I think we have a similar problem. I saw water over there yesterday. I'll show you guys that repair. The rear glass, I don't see much water in the back, which is good. So we may be able to rock this thing for a little while before we do all the weather strips. Um, I just have to watch out for rain. So opening this, um, you can see we got a little bit of standing water in the corner there. But otherwise, looking pretty good. All our little, little body work here is holding up. And uh, this feels pretty good, guys. It's got some give to it, but what I keep saying is, like, look at this panel. This panel, I don't know if you can tell. There's a lot of flex in the panel. Let me put you down here. So, this is one of the regular... SMC fiberglass panels that flexes quite a bit. So if you go up to our repair here, I 
has some flex. And this back wall does too. But I think it falls in line with the rest of the car. So I really think it's strong enough. I'm not terribly worried. I think we'll be okay. I may just uh, do a little, little paint on this area. And uh, I was just trying to test how strong this was. I was kind of able to peel a little bit of this off, but nobody's ever going to be coming in here peeling it off. So uh, it's peeling it off is, is different than uh, like sheer strength. Um, so I'll clean it up a little bit here and there. And I think we're pretty much done with the hole on this side. So I'm happy with the way it came out. And it looks like all of our tape fell off. <laughs> um, I'm happy with the way that it came out. And I think that... Uh, it's all looking pretty good guys so just uh, the next step in the process here so I'll keep keep carrying on with this thing and uh, yeah see you guys in the next video hopefully you guys are ready I'm gonna change the brake switch in the Accord um, pick up this rogue bucket here the brake switch is bad in this thing so I ordered a new one so that's gonna be my next video right now change the brake switch and I'll clean this thing up I got a little cars and coffee thing I might go to tomorrow, so look forward to that. Maybe I'll get some footage there. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next Corvette video or the next Accord video.